Hey guys, welcome to Pellets and Pits. Hey, we took a Snake River Farms American Wagyu chuck roast. We put that all-purpose seasoning on there. We smoked it on the TMG Pit Pellet Hybrid Stick Burner, and I gotta tell you, it came out fantastic. I did a little quick uh, scallop potato. If you guys wanna see this, here we go. All right, there we go. We're getting depleted on our assortment of funny things or odd things that we order from Snake River Farms. They had a fantastic sale uh, several months ago, and I kind of just did like a hodgepodge of things that I felt like I would never find in my grocery stores around my area. Your area could be different. And uh, this is what we have. We have a Snake River Farms American Wagyu Chuck Roast. Fantastic, fantastic. I, I hope it's fantastic. The idea, since we've done a chuck roast a few times like a brisket, it truly is one of my favorite ways to do it. So that's what we're going to do today. Keep it simple. Uh, let the meat speak for itself. That pit's getting uh, warmed up right now. Let's season this thing up. Got some silver skin on the backside. It looks like we need to take care of. But just look at that marbling. That's what you get. That's why I'm so excited. Chuck roast is extremely hard to mess up, but when you have that much fat, taking it that extra couple degrees to make it tender would not be a problem. So first things first, some W sauce. Yellow mustard. This is our homemade, kind of like the Texas rub, salt, black pepper, seasoned salt, little garlic but just grab your favorite. Since ours doesn't have a ton of black pepper in it, we're gonna add more black pepper. And come back in and hit that top side. All right, we probably have roughly about, I don't know, maybe about 30, maybe 40 more minutes before that grill's up to temp. Super cold day today. So while that's going, just let the meat sit out. It's, uh, it's only like 44 degrees right now. The meat will be fine and we'll put on the smoker. We're putting our Chef's Temp Wireless Probe right in the middle. Smoker's rocking about 250 degrees. We're using the TMG Pellet Assist right there in the middle for a long, low smoke. Right, you won't be long until our fire breaks down. So that's a coal bed. And this is a previously burnt piece of pecan from Georgia. Put that on there for our smoke. Let that baby go. Alrighty, roughly six hours later, the deal is the um, chuck roast is sitting around 162 to 164 degrees. I thought about carrying it to like 180, but I like, I feel like at the six hour mark, it's probably got plenty of smoke on it. Uh, we're gonna raise it up to about 208 to 210. That's kind of like the sweet spot when you smoke a chuck roast. So what we're gonna do now is just gonna pull it off. I'll show you it. I've just been uh, tending the fire all day, adding logs as needed, adjusting the coals, you know the game. And then um, we'll bring it up there. We'll put it in a limited full and butcher paper and all that shenanigans. It smell it that. smells amazing. I smell it from here. Yeah. All righty, we have some homemade smoked beef tallow. Always have that on hand. 
Give that a nice glab, dab, all the way around. Wrap it back up in paper. And then I'm just gonna put foil around it so we don't lose any of that fat out of the paper. Thermometer back in. On the pit it goes until it reaches about 208 to 210 degrees. While our truck roast is getting smoked, I thought I'd create something different. Let's do like a uh, jalapeno three cheese potato au gratin. Simply enough, two small potatoes. We're not gonna make a ton. Let's go to water bath, let all that starts come out. Cold water, and then I'll put them on a towel to let them dry. Butter, jalapenos, green onion, flour, Milk. Consistency thin. A little bit of salt. Black pepper. Garlic powder. Touch of nutmeg. Now you don't want this too thick because you add the cheese. The cheese will be a thickening power to your sauce. Just to give you an example. I have Gouda, cheddar, and pepper jack. Just for reference, this is the same three cheeses that we use for our, our turkey enchiladas. Um, so that way if you buy it and you have leftover, want to know what to do with the little extra cheese, Gotcha. Instead of using butter to line our cast iron dish, we're gonna use smoked beef tallow. All right, these are the rinse and dried potatoes we just did on the mandolin earlier. So we're just gonna come in here and not necessarily haphazardly, but we are just going to coat the bottom of the skillet. I kind of like to bring my potatoes up on the side. Did you say half-hazardly? That's not the word I wanted to use, but... <laughs> no, you almost got it. What'd I say? Well, you said half, like cut in half. <laughs> right, but the word is supposed to be... Hap. Hap-hazardly? Yes. H-A-P. <laughs> Why? That's what it is. Who came up with that idea? I need to teach them the English language. Oh, honey. You definitely want these potatoes thin. If you don't have a mandolin, um, you know, obviously you can do as the best you can with your hand, um, but the thin potatoes typically come out a little bit better. Okay. You can see our sauce already thickened up. That's why you want your uh, Mornay sauce, your bechamel actually, to uh, be super thin. Now we're just gonna coat this with the jalapenos and the green onions, all those mixed with cheeses. Put some more of that shredded cheese in there in a layer and just repeat the process. Sprinkle the tops a little bit more cheese. In the oven it goes about 375 uh, for a good amount of time, maybe about uh, 45 minutes. I'll probably cover it with a piece of aluminum foil first for about the first 20 to 30 minutes. So the tops don't get too dark and then we'll take the foil off and finish it the rest of the way. All right, I've rushed the cooling process. I just opened it up so it had a chance to cool down instead of just keeping it wrapped up. So, 
Oh, all those goodies, all that flavor from the beef, a little bit of that tallow. Save those trimmings. And just like that, that thing is looking perfect. What a color. I don't know what you can see on your camera. We're losing light. That's what happens in the dead of winter. I brought it up to about 208 degrees. It carried over to about 211 degrees. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I don't know if you can see that. Juicy. Even at 211 degrees. It's probably a hair hot. Mm. 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 that'll definitely work the bark look how close to the edge that was and it's still juicy look at that just falling apart mm. oh mm. i love a good smoked chuck roast probably now my favorite way all right i didn't necessarily want to make the video about this but as you can see home run take out your portion and then I'll leave the rest for me because I know that you don't like I do. oh, yeah. with that beef tallow look how clean that cast iron is that dang chuck roast is on point mm-hmm butter <laughs> the chuck roast or the potatoes i hate to say it it's part of the game though taste that beauty right there so the question is do we think the wagyu is worth it i'm glad i bought it on sale full price it'd be right there on the borderline of iffy when you cook a chuck roast this long you have to have the fat in there and that's one of the reasons why i did it like this first of all i absolutely love these things uh, but with the added fat, I thought this would be a perfect combination, and it is. So you got to be careful what kind of truck roast you use. The more fat, the merrier, and that's why you get the American Wagyu style. So on sale, yes. Take advantage of the sales that they have. I wouldn't necessarily go out there and just fork over the money full price, but there is so much fat in that. It is absolutely cooked to perfection. It's tender. It just pulls apart. It's not overcooked, even reaching those high temps because of the fat in there. So yeah, potatoes on point. This <laughs> hit us on Instagram, hit us on Facebook. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, share with your friends. Cheers. <laughs> Let's eat. That top right there is money.